In this video, I'll be explaining the benefits of specialization and why it's a great path for many of you. So this is the concept of focusing extensively on a given muscle or exercise in the hopes of either overcoming plateaus or just taking your performance to a different level. It's putting all your eggs in one basket, being as specific as possible. Which is what? Ideal when it comes to accelerating the progress on whatever you're trying to specialize in. We all know about specificity of training, and this can include the percentages that you're using, the volume that is given for your sport, but then there's the exercise itself, which is probably the most significant factor. After all, there is tremendous debate on volume, intensity, and different parameters I'm not gonna talk about today. So the movements themselves are key. In the case of specialization, there is no second guessing carryover. It is what it is. You're dropping out that which is either suspect to not improve your performance or movements that could have carryover yet aren't optimal. And that's the key distinction. What you have is the closest thing to peaking. It's not peaking, it's similar, because in that case, there is a specific waving system that we go through in the hopes of doing the best for our competition, but this is the next best thing. For example, if you choose to specialize on the bench press, you'll be adding in the close grip bench, mixing in pause and touch and go, breaking up the eccentric concentric chain, maybe even switching a barbell here and there. But the thing is, you're just doing the bench. It's not about ring dips, it's not about plant training, you're not trying to juggle all these different elements. So if you want the best of the best, fastest results, optimal here, specialization is the definitive way to do this. And keep in mind, the other muscle groups may take a very slight hit, maintain, or improve very slightly. It's just a ratio here. So don't think that you're screwed in other respects, that when you start introducing some of the former exercise that is going to be this huge roller coaster effect. That's not necessarily the case because with specialization, this is my second point, you are increasing your strength potential. What I mean is muscular weaknesses are finally being combated and a lot of you guys need this. You need to be put in your place in the sense that stop doing the exercise you're good at. This is how you're going to get the best carryover in the long run. You have to train movements that are terrible for your build. The movements that from a ratio standpoint are not quite up to par. And you'll know what those are based off looking at strength charts, even comparing yourself to other lifters, which I'm not a fan of, but that could do the same thing. And of course, just being objective. If you're benching three plates for one, yet your OHP is at two plates for five, bro, your pecs are lagging hard. With an overhead press like that, you should be in the high threes and even four or five and beyond in my honest opinion. So. When you see distorted ratio, specialization allows you to correct that. And it's that correction, which is not only good for injury prevention, but also aids in the long term. Because now you don't have to worry about this weakness anymore. And when you start running a general strength program, the carryover is gonna be that much better. So initially you might take a little hit, but when we look at it from an overall perspective, this is nothing but benefits. You put an inch on those triceps, you just took your bench press potential to a whole new level, even though that wasn't even your objective. You training like a bro for a little bit, getting some hypertrophy training those arms, you thought it was a bad idea, right? Well, it wasn't, that's the truth. So even though it's specialization, it's hyper-focused, and the goal is not general strength, inevitably, it ends up being that way, just because you are correcting areas that are holding back your potential. So that's the craziest part of all. Not only does it give you the short-term gratification, but after a long period of time, it 100% catches up. And on that note, I want to talk about the concept of absolute load very quickly. It depends what you're trying to specialize in, but what I can say is this. If you know for a fact that some areas are proportionally lagging from that ratio perspective that I discussed previously, guess what? Focusing on that can give your body a little bit of a break in two ways, physical and mental. And this has to do with stimulus to fatigue. If you're benching in the high threes and decide to specialize in the OHB, well, now your weights are only going to be in the 100s. You might go as high as 185 for your peak work sets. But what's that compared to doing 315 for reps? It's nothing. Your body will feel more refreshed while giving other muscle groups a slight break. That's why I said you might either maintain, lose a tiny amount, or improve very slightly. So if you're just doing OHP, your pecs are going to feel refreshed, and you're not lifting as heavy even though the percentages say you are. Because that's not the only thing we got to factor in. We need to look at leverages and the actual exercise itself and how that affects the way we feel. So this will give you 
really good recovery. You're not feeling all beat down all the time. And then the mental break is just hyper focus. You're not stressing about anything else. This is your goal. I want a bigger way to dip. I want a bigger front squat. I don't care about the deadlift. I don't care about the bench press. Whatever you choose to do, that's the only thing on your radar. And everything else doesn't matter anymore. That in itself lifts a huge weight off your shoulders. Ego detachment 101. You don't care about the consequences. This is what you want to do and you're reaping what you sow. Simple as that. And in this case, the motivation is going to be so high because you're seeing tangible results right before your very eyes. That's what happens when you specialize. It's just boom, 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 gains left and right. Who cares about the other stuff right now? You're not trying to be the jack of all trades, master of none. This is all about maximizing specificity of training. And you will do that every single time when you choose to specialize. And on that note, I want to end off this video by saying this. You're going to get very smart at programming this given exercise or correcting this given muscle group to the extent that you actually become an expert in this field. Look at the bench press specialists out there. Insane performance and other lifters go to their channels specifically for the bench. It's not about the squat, it's not about the dead, it's not about posts, it's not about anything else except for what they chose to specialize in. So they have the ultimate level of credibility when it comes to providing information or just showcasing some programming parameters or what they're doing. It's cool because it's really niche. We have a lot of niche topics in fitness. You know, there's nutritional stuff. There are different sports. But then there's the muscle groups like Leroy Colbert. First man in the world to build 21-inch arms. That gives you arm training credibility in that sense. Of course, there's genetics and all that, but I'm speaking general terms here. My point is, you know how to train that lift. You know how to correct the weak points. And if people come to you, you'll lead them down the right path. And that's cool, man, because not everybody has the same objectives. Not everyone cares about general strength. Some of us just want to have big arms, for example. Well, if you're that guy, there's someone out there who will benefit from your specialization. So that's just a bonus little point, but I, I really like that. I like the fact that it expands the fitness community in even greater detail and that there's no judgment passed upon. Now you think anybody's hating on Julius Maddox? And of course, it's good for you too. Your confidence is gonna be so high when it comes to raising that lift and what you'll often find over time is that a lot of the principles that got you to this elite number are often universal. Specificity of training is not that complicated. Training doesn't differ that much from muscle group to muscle group or exercise to exercise. What got you to a four or five bench will probably take you to a 500 squat. It just requires a bit more understanding of the exercise variety itself and what gives you the most carryover when you're being specific. But overall, volume and intensity manipulation, it's all the same thing. So that understanding in itself gives you the knowledge to succeed at any fitness goal which is really enlightening long-term, especially if you want to go down a different path eventually. So that would be my take on this subject. Overall, I think you can see my points very clearly now. Specialization is absolutely worth it. Even if your goal is short-term, eventually everything collides. So that's all I got to say. Hope you enjoyed this video. I want to know from you now, what has your experience been with specializing? I'd love to hear feedback, post it down below, and I'll talk to you in the next video.